So, hey and hello everyone, uh, this is Rohit from uh, DSE Sastra Dim to be University. I hope you are doing good and uh, your family in these uh, tough times. So, I welcome you all to this exclusive session on uh, latest innovation and trends in Flutter by Ms. Mrs. Kamal S. So, she is a software developer with 11 years of experience in web technologies, Android and Flutter and uh, also has worked for multinational firms in India, Netherlands and USA. She also has an active YouTube channel named WhatsApp Coders with uh, 11.6K subscribers right now. And uh, she's also an international speaker with uh, her talks featured in Chicago Meetup, DevFest, Michigan, and etc. So uh, I take immense gratitude and uh, to welcome uh, Mrs. Kamal for uh, joining us in this uh, session. And uh, like, uh, hope you have a great time uh, for the next one hour and uh, learn a lot. Uh, cheers to learning. Um, bye bye. So over to you, Mrs. Kamal. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for that quick introduction. And um, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to my session, which is the latest trends and innovation in Flutter. I'm Kamal. Uh, I'm a project manager in Flutter, uh, which is a freelancer, basically, and a YouTuber. So yeah, he spoke about my YouTube channel. So it's called WhatsApp Coders. So if you want to do check out a few videos on Flutter, you can definitely check it out. So today I would be talking more on Flutter from a developer's point of view. So everybody knows Flutter, you have widgets, you know, Flutter for web, it's a single code base, you can get animations done. But from a developer's point of view, there are a lot of other aspects also that you need to understand, which would be the a new version, the architecture. Now, how is that one single code base, you're able to run your app on both mobile and web? So that's a very important question that as a Flutter developer, you should be able to understand. And also, we work on packages day in and day out. So we need to understand when to choose the right package, what type of package to choose, so these are the kind of questions you should be aware of as a Flutter developer, just not the widgets or the logic or good at animations. So you should understand all these aspects, which I would be covering in this session and also a few UI cases that I will show you how you could do it and the latest uh, updates on Flutter. So first thing uh, first to talk about the community part, it's very important because without community, I think Flutter wouldn't have flourished so much with even though the tool is really awesome. It, it is that the community and the people working together, bringing up so many awesome things that what make Flutter even more better than any other platform. So we have almost 2 million developers who are using Flutter UI framework for whether it could be building a mobile desktop or a web for production since 2018 Google IO. And we have 60% of the target audience who are developing on Windows, um, I might not be right with the numbers, it kind, kind of might increase. So we have 27% on Mac and 13 on Linux. And also, if you see, if you're working on a particular technology, you should understand what kind of companies are using it. So we see that over a third of Flutter users are at a startup. So it's not the big forms, it's a startup forms that are using. And 26% are like developers working on an enterprise application. Or 16 or 19% are self-employed. And 7% are the design agencies. So this is the kind of details that you need to keep yourself updated in order to sustain in a particular industry or a particular platform or any other technology. To, to understand a little more depth, we have almost 50,000 Flutter apps built on Android apps. I mean, built on Android apps on the Play Store. So something which is just one plus year old or two. So we have almost 50,000 so you can understand the kind of contribution that we are having these days. And also, uh, we had almost 6,000 issues closed since the stable release, which happened uh, a year back. We have current with 1.17 release. So. So we have almost like t 220, uh, 220, I think, yeah, 220 contributors working on it. So you can see how the community is working towards getting all the issues resolved by the developers for the developers. 
and there was another interesting factor which was the dart 2.8 which got released now what's the, what is that it really makes this uh, tool really uh, outstanding is it actually overcame this null safety feature because whenever an app is built it sometimes crashes saying application not responding so as an app, if you're from an android developer background or if you worked on apps you can understand the the issue with the null so this da 2.8 is actually kind of overcomes those kind of issues and also we have something called uh, if you've developed a flutter app you know that we always use packages in a pub spec file so what do you do you find a particular package say for example you're working on a google chart and you want to use a chart package you go to that particular website which is pub.dev and then pick that package add the dependency in the pub spec file and then what you do you build it now say for example this package gets upgraded now the developer who developed it thinks okay let's add some more features and the versioning of this package gets increased he might change it so now how do you think as a developer we know that these package are changed and we have to keep updating our pex pub spec file regularly so one way of doing this is going to the pub.dev grabbing the new latest version updating it and then rerun this is not a best practice but it is laborious now dart has come up with a new support which is the pub outdated command from the terminal so the moment you run this what it actually does is it helps you understand what is your major or minor or latest current versions so you can see here if this is your dependencies it gives you the details of what the current version you are using what is the upgradable one what is the latest one so when it gives you these kind of details of all the dependencies that you've added in a pub spec in one place then you are in a better position to understand what to do with your uh dependencies rather than going to the pub dev into an individual dependency dependencies and adding them so Hello. all you have to do is take the latest version upgraded it uh, with the moment you run this command no, that is the pub no, outdated no, it upgrades automatically edits it and when you rerun all no, no, your dependent dependencies are updated to the latest no, one no, so no, this no, actually no, solves so much of your time and it's a very efficient no, way no. to work as a developer no, so no, this no, most no. of the developers would not know all they do is they follow that old style school of updating it then moving on we have this flutter 1.7 which was in first stable release for 2020 now what are the cool features that got really updated because as a developer if you working on still the old school or old technologies or old stuff it's not going to make you efficient because everyday things are getting upgraded and you have to keep yourself updated So the first thing was the metal support for the iOS performance. So in a moment I'll talk about what this metal support is all about. Then we had the new material components tracking tool and um also there was a lot of improvisations on the performance and size. Now how what what figures I could give you would be like we had 20 to 37 speed up for the navigation that is when you navigate from the uh the navigation menu that kind of speed was increased we had 40% reduction in cpu usage for simple ios animate and um, if you been developing flutter apps you know there is something called flutter gallery where you have all the flutter uh, functionalities that particular app size was reduced almost from 18.5% that is from 9.6 mb to 8.1 mb So that indicates that there were a lot of improvisations done in terms of performance, size, usage. And moving on to the metal support. A metal support is nothing but it's providing a direct access to your underlying GPU. That is that is what makes your Flutter apps run faster. So say for example you have an iOS device which is a version which is less than 10, then you won't have this metal support. So that time what happens is it renders your native speed itself. So if you have a device which is 10 plus then you would understand this metal support and how fast your app is running. So for a comparison you could do it. But this was one of the uh uh updates that was done in the Flutter 1.7. 
Next, moving on, another cool feature was the navigation rail. Say, for example, uh, it was actually a new widget which was introduced to offer this responsive app navigation. Now, these kind of navigations you would use, you build an app using a single code base, which is on your Flutter mobile. And the same you want to convert to a Flutter web. And you want this collapsing bar. So how would you do it? So it's quite difficult uh, to do it as in terms of widget. But now you already have a widget called navigation rail. So all you have to do is just use this and you're good to go. So it's making it easy to swap and for the bottom navigation app bar screens as the sign screens, I mean, as your screen size increases. And then you have the date picker with the text selection, which is very important because we all had was a date picker, but not with the text one. And it also includes this new visual match uh, with the material guidelines. So, so there you go, you have the text also available. So that was one more introduction in 1.17. Because the, these are the features which we actually use in and out in our day-to-day -day application. So rather than working uh, from scratch and getting things done, this is a better way to understand that there are readily available widgets. Next, we have something called motion specifications, which like defines four transition patterns because I was always looking for these kind of transition and I don't have to hit my head looking for some animations and all. So now these are being introduced in 1.17, whether it could be um, clicking of an article or expanding a mail or a floating button or your search. So this kind of transitions, either like a container transform, shared access, fade through, fade out. So it actually, it's very easy. All you have to do is just drop them in your app and you're good to go. So that's the kind of uh, flexibility um, 1.17 offers in Flutter. Next, moving on to another interesting thing, which I was very much looking when I was working as a developer, which was the font. So whenever I had to work on font, um, in case if you're working on a text scale implementation, you will understand uh, the fonts are so interesting because it allows a developer to easily experiment with any of the fonts you want. So all you have to do is Google font and type the font. So it comes from the font google.com in your app. And when the app is ready to publish, then the developer decide whether the user receives the font by either downloading it from the API or it is pre-bundled with the app package. So that's the beauty of this uh, font stuff from Flutter. And then we have another cool feature, which is the Dart Dev Tool, which is the network tab. Um, so if you're if you're working as uh, on a website or or if you've been as a web developer, you know when you inspect an element by clicking the right click on your mouse, you get the console and you can see your network tab source inspect all those features but in a dart this was introduced where you can literally use the flutter inspector to inspect each wid widgets and then the memory timeline but the interesting part that i always focus is on the network part because it shows the network traffic of your flutter app once you press the record button because you have a record button here as well so it tells about the incoming traffic the outgoing excuse me, the outgoing, the header details, which we did not have. So if you're developing for Flutter for web, definitely these features are handy, so you could use them. Then moving on to Adobe XD. That was another cool feature that uh, I was really looking for it uh, for a very long time. Uh, just kidding. Yeah. So, as a Flutter developer, if I had to develop this UI, what I would do is I had to start it from the scratch, first layout container, and then start with a stack widget, then add these navigations, and then add these uh, separate widgets, and I had to do so many things. Yes, it is time consuming, but definitely you would achieve this design. But then Adobe XD came up with this. All you had to do is you have an Adobe XD, and just add this plugin, which is XD to Flutter. 
and put paste your PSD file. And here what you do is you select your Flutter project path. That is the moment you say Flutter create, you get a project created for you, right? So just add that path here, say lib, and where do you want all your images to be stored? So put the path over here and give the name for the prefixes, the files that you want. I usually prefix with XD just to identify these are XD files. And then if I say export all widgets, it takes only two seconds. Trust me, I would, and for that you have to add these dependencies just to ensure that you are using Adobe. So the moment I do, I get all my images here. I get the XD files with the widget. It automatically creates all the widgets for you. So if I had to do this, definitely I would take a day or two, but in two minutes, just with the PSD file, which is this PSD file, I can get the entire widget recreated for me. That, that is how the plugin has been designed and how cool it is. It's just like your Rive for animations where you create animations and you take the Flare file and just add it in your Flutter application and you get the entire animation in your Flutter app. So similarly, you have the same thing with your uh, prototype where you have a prototype and it generates the entire widget tree. Now, the, on this widget tree, you can start adding all your interactions, your clicks, and navigating to a different screen. You could do it. So just one, add the plugin to the Adobe, then add the plugin here in your pub spec file and export it. All the widgets, you will get the images, you'll get even the files as well. So that's about the XD part. Now moving on to the architecture which is a very interesting topic where as a flutter developer you need to understand so the first one is uh, people do ask me uh, Kamal uh, should I start from flutter mobile first or should I start from flutter web and then move to mobile if you ask me I would say try with flutter mobile get your dart concepts right basics right testing clean architecture understand what state management is and then if you switch to web it would be easy but if you're from a web de uh, web development background or if you're from a different background you already know about these concepts then directly you can move on to the web part but my suggestion would be try mobile understand the flutter architecture and then move on to the web Okay, architecture. So when I say architecture, why I emphasize so much on the architecture part is, say for example, uh, we, we see that we write one single code and we are able to run the same app on the mobile and on the web. How is that possible? Now, what is exactly happening? All I do is just build it, click on the green button, it runs and I can see it on my mobile phone and then if I do, uh, a flutter run I can see it on my web so to understand this underlying architecture how things are working first let's understand what uh, or how a browser works a simple way of understanding because at the end of the day when I say flutter web it, it uses our browser right so we need to understand those aspects so I'm not going to get very depth into browser working just a simple gist of it so in a browser, we have something called UI engine, browser engine, and rendering engine. So these are the three engines that are available. Now, if you ask me what's a UI engine, it displays your UI part. That is your layouts, your buttons, your pictures, everything. Now, browser engine acts as a bridge between your UI and your rendering engine. And the rendering engine, what it, it does, it, it compiles all your HTML, JavaScript, the CSS and it generates the layout so that's and then finally you get the painting on the screen that is it draws on the screen and that's how you're able to view things so that's a browser part now if you come to the flutter part flutter has two parts one is the engine which is the blue color here and the other one is the green which is the framework now this architecture is for flutter mobile and this one is for the flutter web now, there is one common thing between the web and the mobile, which is the green section. So, which is the framework. So, since the framework remains common here for both, 
that's why we say a single code base okay that's that actually clears one part of a problem now but what does this framework actually contains it contains your material cupertino material or cupertino depending on your os android or ios and then you have the libraries widgets rendering and the dart ui which is the basic functions now if you go to the engine part you have the skia 2d graphics which actually helps you to build a very faster apps and then you have the virtual machine um, which is the dart vm then the service protocols then the platform specific channels now as i mentioned the green is common that's why you have the same code running on both the platforms that is the both the web and the mobile but what about the blue section so i have the blue section in my mobile but not on the web so is that something has been missing definitely not it is present on your front of web as well but the difference lies in the engine implementation because in the browser part the rendering is little different how it rendering is based on the different technologies in the web that we use say for example you have a dart code so that's how you write right from flutter so you have your dart code then what happens is your flutter engine actually take care of it by converting your dart code to the corresponding html css and the canvas painting stuff and then there is something called dart2.js compiler this is the icing on the cake this is the one is actually responsible for converting your dart code to your javascript that is like the server to browser and the creation of the tree and then painting so that extra layer or the extra component that actually does all this is your dart to js and that also is responsible to run your apps faster when compared to javascript why because there's some bridging all uh, present but in this in the react world if you see there's this bridge available but in this flutter you don't have so this compiler actually take care of all the functionalities okay so the in the overall nutshell if i have to tell if you as a developer if you write a code you create a widget say it could be a container it could be a row widget column widget anything then what happens layouts are created after layouts you have something called rendering of the tree and then you have a composite layer which is like the offsets parameters those kind of values and then your flutter engine comes into picture which actually it's a canvas api which pro, which is provided by the browser and that actually wraps it inside your html tag so just to cite you with an example i'm just going to show you how the wrapping of um, in the flutter web how things really work so i'm just going to take an example so this this website uh, basically tells you how uh, wh where you have all your sample web applications so i'm just going to pick one of them and uh, just show you the inspecting part and how it's rendered so i'm just going to launch this app and you will find all those links um, later so i'm just going to click on inspect now if you see there is this weird um, offset values that is what i was telling it actually it's the composite layer which actually um, binds everything but at the end if you see it is a simple canvas it's a simple div element so only this is something which is extra at the end of the code it's a simple div element so that's how it is able to render things in web so this is if you actually inspect it it's just adding that flt scene transform picture canvas all those details but at the end it's the pure div tag paragraph tag header tag images that's what you see here so this is how it's getting rendered on the web then moving on to the uh, state management a very interesting topic uh, uh yeah before that i just have one more point uh, the advantages of flutter web is as you know it's a single code base first thing it supports it supports pwa and most of the widgets are accessible so if i use a widget and on my mobile i can use the same widget on my web also 
and similarly uh, for plugin as well so if i use a plugin uh, say to draw uh, some beautiful uh, charts uh, it works on my mobile i don't have to use a different plugin for web i can go with the same plugin because we have because the packages are developed in such a way that they are compatible with all mobile web desktop android ios everything and i would say flutter for web is more of a product than a platform it m- focuses on product because when i'm building a flutter app i don't have to take care of uh, platform specific issues like okay if it's chrome i have to handle these issues if it is an um, internet explorer i have to take care of all the browser issues no flutter take care of those things for me all i have to do is just build the product so it's more on focusing on the product rather than a platform so coming to state management a very interesting topic and um a very discussed topic also because people always have this discussion which state management to choose in flutter so for me first thing as a flutter developer if you want to know about state management you need to understand this formula uh, it's it's a very basic formula which says that if you change the state your ui builds from scratch that is how flutter works because every time there is a counter when, whenever you do a flutter create you get the counter app right so whenever i click on the counter either plus or minus then number gets increment or decrement so each time when i'm clicking on the button i say set state the counter increases so w- what is the set state set state is nothing but rebuilding of your app or the ui so to understand this formula it's nothing but it's a function which is calling the state so state could be anything input given by the user so it's the function with the state as the input and when you call this function the ui is written so that is whenever the state changes the ui gets rebuilt so this is what st- set state is all about and how flutter rebuilds the app so this is a very important thing if you don't understand this flutter is is, is it would be difficult for you to understand what is state management so it's like flutter calls this function whenever you are rebuilding your widgets all right so we have a uh, loads of widgets so we have i mean we have loads of uh, state management whether it could be block mvc provider um scope model mobx redex and now uh, recently we even have a new one which is called river pod and we also have inherited widget now you might ask me kamal you know what you have so many whenever i want to develop flutter apps i really don't know uh, which one to choose or i always have a problem so according to me there is nothing bad or good state management it totally depends on your project so to just cite you with an example uh, whenever i do whenever i have to buy an ice cream on a weekend or something like that uh, we have these flavors displayed now how do i know which flavor is good for me so either i do a taste test i ask them can i taste this flavor or either i ask the person what is the flavor of the day or um either uh, i go with my instinct something like that or i look for the fancy stuff and i then go for it so what i would say is similar way that's how i approach event state management so if i have to know what to use all i do is first do a taste test that is understand the state management whether it could be block or mobx understand how it is taste it and then start using it so it totally depends on your project to project so if if my project requires a very simple set state why do why not stick to it if my app requires a very or if i'm working on a very big team uh, with a complex app and it requires a lot of uh, modules and a lot of separations then definitely i would go for a block so the thumb rule is there's nothing good or bad state management it totally depends on uh, what's your project requirement your understanding about state your judgment about it and your justification to the client as to why you're using the state management so a couple of other things also is based on your performance passing state 
or whether you want a separation between presentation and business logic. Say, for example, if you're working on a simple counter app, I'm not going to use block and complicate my app because the block boilerplate code itself is more than the app's code itself. So why would I go for a block or a different one? I would use a simple st set state to do it. So that's how you need to think before choosing a state management. So yeah, so you need to understand your requirement. So this is my requirement for the project. So let me see which state management works. Then understand the goals and expectation. So my goal is to work on this app, get this done, separation of logic or my data. Say maybe in the future, instead of Firebase, I might go for SQLite or something else. So then I need a separation of data. I cannot have everything in a single page or something. Then understand, go for a better state management. Then the complexity and the style. Style, I would say is, say for example, um, for example, I like provider a lot. But the team that I'm working with is using block. So I'm not going to say, you know what, I'm not pretty comfortable with block. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use provider. Let me stick to it. No. If the company is looking for it and if they're asking to use a particular style, you have to stick to it because they would have analyzed or the consultant would have analyzed and found that this really works for their business need. Flutter packages, very interesting topic because we use packages day in and day out in your pub spec file because they keep screaming, use me, I'm good at this. So in the market, we have thousands of packages. In fact, I think more than thousand these days because you have everyday packages getting created. Now, if I type the word chart, I have so many packages coming in. Now, how do I know which one to choose? Everything works. Everything is good. So how do I choose the right one? So there are certain criteria. So first I have listed down the details and the next one I'll show you the life uh, of these features. So first thing when I'm choosing a package, if I have to use them in my app, I would look for a bill status and the version number. So the bill status, uh, it tells you when it was billed and the version, those details are common. Next is the score. Score actually tells you how your package has been performing in that particular package world. Where does it stand? So the maximum score is 100. So the minimum score, I've seen even apps with 45 score. So if you find any apps above 95, they are good to go. So I'll show you in, on the live website. And then compatibility. Say, for example, you're building an app and in the future you would uh, migrate uh, event. I mean, you would also develop the web version of it. So if you used a package which is only compatible with the mobile and not with the web, definitely you would not use it because when you come to the point of building the web, you should think for an alternative what package to use for it. So you have to see packages if they are compatible with both Android, iOS and web and in case desktop, all those details. And then you have author details and you also have something called github report link you know flutter is an open source you have worldwide developers contributing you can contribute you can create a package you can contribute to someone else package so whenever there is a package you would have an open source where you can see how this package was built and also you have a link of all the issues which are open and closed if they're working on the improvisation of this package or if there's something issues closed that you were looking for. And also they have this clean instruction um, on the installation and the examples as well. So what I'm going to do is, so this is how it looks like, but I'm going to show you a, the live one so that uh, you have a better understanding of it. So the website is called pub.dev. And this is how you search for packages. Say, for example, I'm searching for a chart. So I have so many packages available. Now, which one to use for? OK, sometimes names tell me what exactly these chart do. This is pie chart. OK, then I'm looking for a pie. This is a visual chart. OK, fine. But you see here the scores. That's also something which you're looking for. Say I'm going to use this FL chart. So this was developed by uh, a particular a publisher. So first thing, as I said, this is the score. So the, he's scored, this package has scored a 99, which is like for 100. 
Now, where has he lost the score is in the popularity and I mean the overall score. So basically, popularity is where he has lost three points and that's where the average comes to 99. Next, you have to look if it is compatible with Android, iOS and web. Sometimes you would not find web and iOS, just the Android. Then I would say think about it before using it unless you really want to stick to it. The next is you have very clean instructions with the versioning. Say for example, I had by the when the time I was developing the app, I had used this version. You also have the details of the versioning with the documentation. So if I had used this version, uh, if I had to know what was the other details that got upgraded, I can really have a look into this documentation and find out those details. And also, as I mentioned, we have something called the GitHub repo. So if I click on this link, it takes me to the link where it tells me how this app was built. So I literally can find out the details of it because it's open source. And also I can see an issue. Now, why am I focusing so much on this is say, for example, um, I had used this package. So if you look at this package, he's, it's a very animated package. Say, for example, I wanted instead of uh, text, I wanted a few other few more properties here. And uh, that is my requirement. And but this plugin does not have these properties. So instead of me creating a new one, adding this new functionality, what I would do is first look if there is already an open source where someone is working on a similar kind of issue. So if someone is working, then I don't have to wait for uh, I mean, I don't have to develop a new one. All I have to do is go check with that particular person, see if he's already built it and if I can use it or you could approach the owner of this package and say, OK, this is what I'm looking for. Would you like me to add this and I'm ready to build it? So that's how you work in community and contribute also. So it's a very important thing because most of the issues gets resolved because you don't have to create a package. It gets solved by these details. And then a couple of um, UI that I've done. So for Flutter for web, what I did in this case is all I did was I created a single code base, which I did on Flutter mobile. Then I ran the same code on the Flutter for web. So the only difference in the code was if the screen size is so much display three blocks, if not display two and then display one. So only that was the only minimal change that I did. And I was able to run the same code on my mobile and as well as on my web. So that's how flexible or that's how easy it is when I say single code base. So it was a simple responsive app and this was another uh, interesting uh, dashboard uh, with this overlapping grids and uh, the similar way like the four three one grid structure so all when i developed all this all i had was a simple single code i did not have a separate code for mobile and separate for web one code it runs on all three which is android ios and web and this is also another example for creating your flutter web so the same thing runs on your mobile also and your web and this is another example uh, this one you must have already seen which i showed you the live example so there is a gallery for flutter web where you can see all the examples built one word of caution is flutter for web is still in the beta release so it's not in production yet so just wait for a couple of more days. They might get re released. Then you can have it a full-fledged working uh, production web apps. But as of now, yes, you can work on apps. It works absolutely fine. But if you ask me for production release, no, it's not yet ready. But yeah, for mobile apps, it has been, it's ready uh, one year back itself. And uh, say if you are new to Flutter and you want to try Flutter and you say, Kamal, um, uh, I don't want to install any IDE and work on it. Uh, do you know how I can start working? Yes, definitely it is possible. There's something called Dartpad with Flutter and you can work on it. This is one of my friend who developed uh, this awesome uh, app uh, just using the Dartpad. So I'm going to show you how the Dartpad looks like and where you can So 
So all you type is dot part dot blank, and you can start coding your work. So you don't need any ID. It's online. So you have a couple of samples. Say for example, you have sunflower. So you can also see the code how they have done this. And all I do is just click on run, and I'm able to do it. He's kind of added a slider which actually shows the number of seeds in the sunflower. So you could see what exactly he's done in this. He's used some math functions and he's done that. It's really pretty cool. And you have some examples also, like uh, I think implicit animations. Let's see. Okay. So you could see the kind of animation he's done. So how he's done, he's not used any fancy libraries or anything as such. Just with the normal minimum material dot dot, he was able to get it. So if you want to try dot, uh, you could use this dot pad. And uh, similarly, yeah. So he has this cool feature. And there's this bubble animation effect also. You can see how, so all these links are available in my references so you can see. So it's a very simple thing, but definitely an elegant one. So it is also changing colors. And at the same time, you have this bubble effect. And then you have this glowing Christmas tree or the click disk one, which I already showed you. So this all was done just using that pad. They did not go with any fancy packages. And yeah, so I'll just freeze this uh, slide for a couple of seconds. So that if you want to take a screenshot or I'll also share the slides later uh, with Rohit or Kavin and they would give it to you. So if you want to know where I've picked up a couple of my details, you can find these. And um, I have another interesting uh, discussion is we have community. We have a community called Flutterista for female developers who are who identify as a woman and would be interested to be a part of flutter community you would definitely welcome all you have to do is just ping these two people who are actually coordinating and working on it which is daniel and stephanie they work on it so go to the twitter accounts and just ping them and they would be glad to assist you we have every weekly or twice a week and monthly calls where all around the world we have Flutter developers meeting and talking about a lot of things. And similarly, for the, we have a hump day, uh, which happens Q&A sessions on Wednesday, where you have Scott and uh, Simon, they all, and the Google team also comes in picture and they talk about Flutter. You have any app that you're developing and you have any issues, you can talk to them. They try to coordinate with the Google team or with any of the GitHub uh, people who are working on it. They definitely do this. So community also plays a very important role. So please do um, get in touch with people. Or if you want to get in touch with any of the Flutter developers and you don't know where to start, just ping me or just let me know. I'll help you connecting them. So these are my details. And I think um, keeping this in mind, I think that's it from my end. So Flutter is something which is definitely a beautiful UI toolkit you should try if you haven't tried one. If you're already working on it, good. Um, these are the latest trends and updates that you have on Flutter and every day you have something new coming in. So keep yourself updated with new technology so that you become an efficient developer, just not by following the old style, also knowing that good things in the market. And definitely it's a single code base that is a lifesaver and it runs fast on both mobile, web and desktop. And I think uh, that's it about it thank you so much for your time guys and uh, yeah after this i'm ready for the question q a
रोहित हेलो मैम वन मिनट सेशन इज इन लाइक ई सो लाइक आंसरिंग द क्वेश्चंस इन द YouTube स्ट्रीम राइट नाउ सो सो लाइक देयर आर सम क्वेश्चंस ओवर देयर आई विल आस्क हिम टू पिंग यू इन द मीट इन अ मिनट और थैंक्स रोहित शो वन मिनट Uh, session please put forward the questions asked in youtube over in here Okay what architecture i prefer in the sense uh, was it a state management that you're talking about because architecture is i i cannot prefer anything um uh, if it i was just discussing how flutter of mobile architecture is different from flutter web so if you are asking about which state management i prefer personally um i would say it totally depends on my project Hello, but per, yeah yes yeah, session hello can you hear me yes I, yes i i do okay uh, there were three questions the first one is about null safety so uh -huh. they uh, they want to know what exactly is null safety and uh, why is it so Uh, it's a big uh it's a big thing why okay. it's so important okay um okay to answer that question what happens is when you are working uh as an app developer most of the time you your variables actually tend to get into null and you your program really does not recognize it those then kind of uh, errors can be found only when you run the app and when you uh deploy it and when you run it gets crashed because you cannot predict those values so to understand all this that actually provides this null safety in your code which is like which are non nullable by default in the meaning the values cannot be null unless you say they can be so that kind of null safety the dart analyzer enforces you for the good practice so it makes sure that you check for the null before reading a nullable variable so that is the flexibility and that's the kind of feature the null safety dart provides okay thank you so the next question was uh, what state management solution do you prefer there are a lot like provider blog mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of uh, 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 state management solutions are based mm -hmm. on the react state management management uh, solutions like redux and stuff so mm -hmm. what do you prefer okay so definitely i was answering this question so if you ask me a state management first thing uh, yes i do have a personal choice but i would see what my project requires and analyze it and do it but if you ask me a straight forward question i would stick to the provider which i really liked but before provider i was using block but after last year's google io 2019 uh, where i personally saw the importance and the cool features of provider i i prefer provider from my end it's pretty simple and straightforward but definitely yeah, i yeah yeah easy to use and uh, straightforward and like and yes, block uh, requires a lot of boilerplate code right so, indeed yeah 
so the next question was uh, do you prefer an architecture like there are a lot of architecture and uh, Uh, there are something uh, called the test driven development and uh, oh, okay. domain driven development do you follow anything any sort of development mm-hmm. style uh yeah i actually tried using this a uh, feature related architecture because i found that kind kind of interesting with flutter uh and it really gels up and it works very well say for example i have a lock in feature so rather than having a data uh service uh view those kind of things for a login what i do is i keep a login as one feature and inside login i have a data service view so that way what happens even if a person comes who's a non technical background or if he's new to the project if he has to look at login feature he does not have to look at the entire project all he has to do is just look at the login folder where the data is inside it the view and the presentation everything is inside it so there's no way connected it so rather than going uh, for the other uh, architecture i say feature based architecture is something that i'm liking these days and i'm using and it is working well with me so i have another question mm-hmm. uh so the usual complaint about uh, flutter is when you develop uh, an app with android app with flutter just for a hello world app it takes about 16 mb or so uh, mm-hmm. although even if we build a larger app it doesn't get uh, much bigger than 20 mb but for a simple app when it takes 16 mb uh, i mean it's not good right so do you see uh, the the size of the basic flutter app reducing in any few time or is, is there any technique by which you can reduce the size of the flutter app Okay uh that's a kind of an interesting question um uh, i would say if that's how it is built it is built basic but if you're building a large app and you want to reduce the size i would say think about the packages what you're using check the global variables try to avoid them and also as i mentioned the boilerplate code uh, think about those kind of details and you could reduce it but if there is an app which uses these size there is no way you could actually minimize that's my point of view uh, okay uh so yeah from uh, akil there's a question so, uh put in the chat section and the meet so could you please answer those okay um okay i i hear from chet and he says i want to start learning flutter thank you for guiding me so can you share links for us for beginners definitely i will share the links i will pass it on to rohit and sheshan um so if you want to learn as as a flutter developer when i started i think the flutter document which is the flutter.dev is the best documentation you can go because that is standardized it has all the latest updates with the latest examples because what happens even if i go with the youtube videos or the medium articles they get outdated time to time So if you want the latest stick to flutter.dev website and then if you want to get into a particular depth into a particular concept or something then look for articles and videos or UIs or anything as such but flutter.dev code labs stick to it that is the best way to learn and even for the dart start with dart which is dart.dev the website stick to the basics learn a concept take that particular concept understand what it is then look for videos or articles related to that particular topic so yeah and uh, from darshana uh, i'm sorry if i'm pronouncing your names wrong uh, is it easier to build apps using flutter framework than using kotlin <laughs> uh, definitely i have tried kotlin i have tried react i have tried android for many years uh, i find flutter really easy if you are from these backgrounds because you already know oops concept you know what's the logic is you know how to handle mobile related queries so it's just a different language now what makes flutter different is a lot of other aspects like the animation the faster usage the single code base because as an android developer when i developed apps if i had to run the same app on ios i had to contact an ios developer he had so many challenges constraints so a lot of things were not working but here no all i need is just one developer and i'm good to go 
with a lot of things but yeah here and there challenges are there but not as much as i used to face but yeah kotlin stands on its own but from but if you ask me it is definitely easy to build minu i came across the river pod can you please give us a small example how we can use it easily okay uh it 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 requires time for me to l- show a live coding or something like that but definitely if you want i can point out to a particular uh github page that i have created a simple example maybe i can show you or i can point out to some any of the articles which i could do it but definitely river pod is also something interesting which i'm kind of liking it these days so yeah what you could do is just take a simple counter app and i think he has a good documentation on river pod so just try, try that and see how it works if not just let me know or ping me uh, i'll help you with it okay uh from akil what is a scope model block pattern okay that that takes into a different uh entirely a different topic uh i have to make you understand the architecture but uh just to tell uh in a simple meaning i would say um uh wait let me think about it how how do i explain uh, it's it's kind of a set of utilities i would say that allows you to um kind of pass your data model from your parent from a parent widget down to its descendant so those kind of things you use the scope model basically for but definitely you have the block documentation so if you really want to get into it so if you see the block yeah this one this guy felix uh he's done a great job in letting you know what exactly these are so if you go to the core concepts flutter flutter block he very clearly tells you what these are multiple i mean multi block provider scope or anything as such so you you can find all those details here so if you still don't don't get it you can let me know and then i have how do you deploy ml models in flutter could you emphasize oh, okay i can do this man so uh, with android and stuff we can use tensorflow light uh, to you know use uh, computer vision mm-hmm. in uh, android uh, u- using android native java and stuff mm-hmm. so uh, can we do that in flutter right now can we deploy ml models can we use computer vision can we use our custom models in uh, flutter right now um i think uh, we can uh, do it but there's a uh, plenty of uh uh i would say uh to, okay actually let's let's talk about the incorporating the machine model in your flutter app i think that, it, that you have to convert your model like the tflt format and then implement it and you have to train your ml models are you, i mean b- basically the ml models are very bulky what do you have to do is you have to occupy more space and hence it's not preferable at this point of time but it is possible but i haven't tried it so much but i think it is possible but there are a lot of challenges when you do that because uh, it's too much of uh, you you have to worry about the space that it occupies by the model because uh, definitely you have to uh, train your models and they are bulky so yeah it is possible but definitely you have some challenges doing them so i think there is one uh, i think article related to the tf flight model so i think you can refer that if you want to really know about it uh uh is is my screen viewable right i am presenting my browser you can see that right no ma'am we can't uh, see your screen your presentation what okay, your presentation now uh okay uh one more okay i was talking about the flutter block i'm sorry if i missed this this is the flutter block part uh for the question uh i think uh i'm uh, still we can see your screen oh okay okay give me one minute okay Session now yeah uh, now we can see yeah okay fine. so for the question asked by uh, akil 
um, the blog part uh, this is the website uh, developed by Felix so you if you want to know anything about blog you, you he has clearly explained it but if you still have any questions related to the blog and you're not getting it just let me know uh, we can take it and I can let you know how what are the differences between scope model or the kind of block and how the architecture is so I can help you with those details because he's clearly explained it and people love the way he explains things so so yeah that's the link and you can use it and uh, from the um, ML okay yeah would you use flutter if you have visual visualization updating let's say thousand times a second <laughs> uh, I would still use it and I would give a try uh, so there's nothing wrong in trying but yeah I would give, still give it a try from Jay Kant. Um, I have one more question yes please so you said you have worked with react Android and other uh, platforms right development mm -hmm. platforms so is there anything you miss in flutter that you got used to uh, in other development so, is there any feature that you miss in Flutter? Is there any feature that you uh, want to see in future updates in Flutter? Uh, okay, uh, definitely not because I'm from an Android background. So, I, when I used to develop, I used to have this uh, declarative layouts, XML separate, the logic separate, and working things. And I, I still, and I, 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 I used to love Android and I used to work. But when the Flutter came with the simple, easy flow with the widgets and the tree structure, I really don't miss. The only thing that I miss are a little more packages, like how in Android you have a full-fledged packages. Uh, here, we still do not have packages. That is the only thing that I still miss, like for the Google Maps. Still, a uh, lot of people struggle with the markers, anything as such. Uh, so packages and a little more tools for when you're integrating it in your IDE or a little more uh, performance related tools those are the two things the rest the platform is absolutely amazing uh, what about 3d you know animations and stuff like in Android you can create uh, mm -hmm. 3d objects and move it mm -hmm. around the space mm -hmm. and yeah is there yeah. any way I mean uh, uh, when do you see uh, 3d uh, modeling coming to Flutter uh, or is there any way already I don't know uh, definitely there are few pe people who have tried I don't know if you guys have used Rive um, it's called uh, it, it is one of the cool animation tools that you, where you can integrate it in your app uh, are you able to see my screen yeah yeah okay so here it, it is like getting all your uh, real-time expressions on the app and it is 2d uh, and you have a lot of skeleton and mixing of animations and you can see the structure so whatever you build here is what you get on your app so that's the kind of uh, effect this app has so you have trim path so please do try out this as well so you do have 3d and a lot of vector stuff and all so just see and let me know but I'm not sure about the 3d part I'm right now it doesn't strike me but if I have one I'll let you know <coughs> thank you Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, is there a way I can integrate Python interpreter to my? Phone? I haven't tried Python, uh, Nikhil, so I'm not sure about it. So maybe I, I can do some research or about it, and maybe I can get back to you or ping Rohit or Shashan about it. Or if you guys know about it, you can let me know, because I haven't tried it, so I'm not sure of it. And uh, Deepak, there is no official TF Lite package. No, that's not the package that I was talking about. Um, it was the, uh, what do you say? Uh, uh, how do you say? Uh, give me a minute. Yeah. Okay, I, I got to check on that also. It was more about uh, how to in, how to integrate the ML part uh, in Flutter. Is it possible? So that that wasn't a package, but I have to definitely check on that if we really have that. 
TF light. Okay, there is one because I haven't tried TensorFlow or anything as such, but there is one. If you see her, you can see that. So I'm not sure if you're talking about this package or not uh, to Deepak. Yeah, Deepak. So there is a package and it says uh, it's for accessing your TensorFlow API for supporting image object detection. So if you want, you can definitely try it. There is an example as well here. So please do try out and see if it really works, but I haven't tried it yet. And um, can you suggest few references where we can learn animations? Okay, I mean, advanced animations, Rife is there. And uh, another one would be a couple of other uh, Google experts who are creating animations. Uh, I can provide you the link. So that's the only way you can work on animations. But advanced animations, you have to try it or you could use this. Rife. So, yeah, are we done so, with the questions? Uh, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, spending your valuable time with us, ma'am. So, uh, uh, this was a great session and also like uh, someone who doesn't know uh, like anything about flutter like me also like i learned something kind of so uh, so thank you so much uh, from uh, all of us and uh, like i uh, hope to see you and uh, partner with you in the near future too same here thank, thank you rohit thank you sasank and uh, thanks everybody thanks for the session and if you have any questions just ping me or uh, you can post your questions to rohit or any of the coordinators and they can get back to me Thank you so much for your time. Have a great evening. Bye. Thank you so much, man. Uh, Ram Narayanan, please.